This is a Frank podcast. On this episode of Honest to Who, I have none other than North City Rizzy Rizvan. If you, uh, uh, the cool thing about this potty is that a lot of people don't know about this man, but you're about to get educated and wholesomely educated. This man is an entrepreneur slash rapper slash producer. And he's got so many slashes, he might as well be Wolverine. Rizzy is a community leader. He loves um, helping others and he just goes through what he thinks when it comes to um, development. He develops himself in a way that's very unique and uh, and he never shies away from his culture. Get in it with the Honest to Who and Rizvan. All right. Uh, thanks, Togo. Fifi Hake. Say be, say be, bro. Look at me, eh? <laughs> Look at me, bro. International. Very good, very good. Go bring that uh, indigenous language awareness into the somebody's going to do the it. atmosphere, bro. I uh, know, man. I was like, it's funny, eh? Like uh, being at uh, teaching and stuff like that. Mm. Bro, you can't neglect that stuff. Even if those kids are, if there's no time at school, you still got to represent. Yeah, represent, representation is important, man. <sighs> and I think, yeah. Bro, I've been wait, like, I've been waiting to have a good sit down with you, Rizzy. Yo. Okay, because um, bro, I got to be honest. Like all of your stuff that I've since I've been, we've kind of what's the word? We've we've missed each other's uh, trains. We've passed each other yeah. quite a lot, and we've had very similar stories. But then, like sharing that with you, and you'll be like, "Oh, I, I did that too," mm. and it's, it's that's why I was like, "Oh, I've got to get my bro Rizzy on." Mm. Oh, bro, thank you. It's an honor to come and just chop it up with you, bro. Because I, I see what you've been doing in the community, on you know, on socials, and I think like, um, yeah, just being inspiring, just seeing your ambition and your drive. I think like community, and it's it's great that you brought that up. Like, mm. do you like community wise? People like you are like, there's not many people that are, oh, there are, but it's hard to find mm. people that put community first over everything. And also like, you know, it's the needs of many outweighs the needs of few. Um, where does that come from with you? Is that, a, is that growing up thing? Is it the village mentality of Tonga? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a fusion of a couple of things. Part of it is, yeah, growing up in the village and just having that communal mindset uh, just to help each other, you know, like help to build. But also just experiences growing up as a youngin and um, understanding the importance of having a mentor mm. or just having people in your corner to help boost you up, you know, um, help empower you through through life, especially for the youngins. Yeah. You know, the rangatahi who are going through it and still trying to find their feet, trying to figure out who they are. They're the ones that probably need the most help. And yeah. um, I knew that when I was at that age, between 13 and Whatever to my twenties, I was I was needing some guidance, and I had that. I was lucky to have that, and um, I was kind of going in the wrong direction for a bit, and then got pulled back by some older cousins who who knew better. Yeah, and so oh, for, for me, it's like I'm just trying to yeah. Yeah. How long were you in Tonga for? Like, did you you were born there? Yeah, I was born there. I came here when I was around ten. Oh wow. 10, 11. So I spent yeah the first decade uh, on the island, and totally just Tongan. Like yeah, else? well. We went to, eventually I went to English speaking school to try to learn the language. Um, but we had, you know, come to New Zealand, gone to America just to visit family. Yeah. Um, so we had those experiences. But yeah, it was still a culture shock to, to come here and go to school here. That's what I was going to say. Did you come straight over to North Shore? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah. But we that started at Northcote. So the oh, first okay. time, and Northcote, uh, for those who don't know, is like, um, there's a large uh, Polynesian population. There's a lot of Tongans there. Um, mainly state housing, but then from Glenfield we moved over. Uh, from Northcote we moved over to Glenfield where my dad's family were. Um, and then when I started school, that all that's when I was like, "What the hell's going um, on?" <laughs> yeah, because that's what I wanted to ask. Like yeah. coming from just speaking Tongan, and that's all it is yeah. to come into a New Zealand school. Because during, and I'm, I'm not going to guess the age. Yeah, like I'm not going to guess when it was. <laughs> back <laughs> in those were, days, back in the uh, 70s, <laughs> nah, two thousand. Uh, oh, two thousand. No, no, sorry, no, no. No, no. but you know what I mean. Like yeah. the, the the diversity in schools and mm. the um, acknowledgement of other cultures was not a was thing. Different. Like it wasn't the same with me because I was speaking Maori. Yeah, like I was. That's yeah. all I was. Where I was brought up in at a marae with my auntie. Oh, yeah. my aunties and my nana, right? Yeah. And then I came up to uh, uh, South Auckland. Yeah. And there was nothing. Different. Yeah, and I, it was my mum that was the person that was like, "We need more of this in there." Yeah, I was very lucky for that. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, how? What about for you, bro? Because that would have been a culture shock. Yeah, I think um, coming here, my my thoughts, my uh, perspective or perception of New Zealand was in Aotearoa is the land of the Maori. Like as a kid, mm. I just thought, oh yeah, that's where the Maori are. Yeah. 
they're like me. But I got here, and when I started primary, I was like, bro, there's like two brown people in my year. I, I was, was lied like, to. Wow, what's going on? Like, I, I just didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know the history, and I didn't understand coming from the island. So I think um, there was a lot of um, adjusting to, to do, and I don't think I really adjusted until I was into my late 20s. Not just the school system and, and the people, but it was just my mindset, like, I feel like as a young and in, in, in that situation, I was overcompensating myself because I saw heaps of stereotypes through movies, mm. um, police then seven, things yeah. like that. And I'm like a represent I'm the representation of that those that people yeah. in my area. And it's like predominantly Pakeha. And I'm like extra, oh hey, oh hey, hey guys. Oh, you had to go oh, over hey, the top. Man. Oh, all good. I'm yeah. not gonna rob you. I'm yeah. not gonna steal, you know, yeah. like so I had to unlearn that for ages because I was like, bro, that's not me. When did you like, realize that though? Very ages. It took yeah. a, it took many conversations around the 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 tanoa, the the cover bowl, um, just talks of cousins, others who had the similar experience. Um, we had to like code switch. Yeah, regularly well, a lot of us do. on the daily. I do it all the time. Yeah, but I think as a as it's a young man, it, it starts to settle in, and then you think that's your norm, and then you're like, bro, this ain't even me. Like, you know, it's funny you bring that up because a lot of the a lot of our brothers that go over to Australia, right? Eh? Yeah, you know they. When they come back and they've been there for like three months and they you come back and they start, oh, hey, mate, how's yeah, it going, yeah. lad? Yeah. I think it like, like, and this is what I've been told, is that that happens because they kind of mock it. They're, yeah. they're like just trying to fit in. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah, mate, cheer, cheer. And then all of a sudden it just slowly creeps in and that's yeah. how they speak. But yeah. it was the, yeah, that's interesting. I think, I mean, any environment that you put into, yeah. whether it's um, a workplace with a tradey talk. Yeah. I see my my you know the, the youngins that I work with. As soon as they get into that, the way that they speak changes. The language, the slangs, jail. You go into jail first time, whatever. The language they pick up. I work in youth justice. The kids that come in, some of them aren't even um, there through the courts, or they're just there waiting for placement in a home. So they haven't committed any crimes. They're just there waiting for placement. But you can see the change because the environment, yeah. the, whatever environment you go into, you absorb everything: the language, culture, and so. Whether you're in Australia, New Zealand, or America, I see my cousins in the States. They're, they're literally like gang members. Just They just absorbed everything that's happening around, you know, their environment. And they, that, that's all they know. Yeah, well, yeah, like there's a saying, like, you're always a product of your environment, right? 100%. And I think some of our um, young people and some, some of our rangatahi, you know, because this is, we'll, we'll get into this because we both worked in um, youth justice and and mm. um, I was at um, I was at Kurawai Manaki for a little while but I yep. was at Whakataka Pokai for which is the care and protection unit yep. which is the younger ones when I was there yep. and man some of the things you know some of the things I would see and I would like when I first started there right it was like I was like man stuff these kids da 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 because I didn't know any any other way yep. and then I started realising it's not their fault yep. and I think somebody like you that understands that you know, it is a, it's an eye-opening experience mm. working at places like that. Yep. When, when was the first time when you were like, wow, this was, this is different? The first time I walked in there, maybe about six, seven years ago, um, I went there to run a, um, a holiday program, but you know, I've never been inside and I've never been into YJ, uh, Youth Justice. So it was like a, it was a shock mm. to see what it's like in there. It's like, um, I thought instantly it was like a mini jail. And then I was on the same state of mind because those kids been through so many challenges. I didn't find out till later, you know, the the backgrounds that they come from and the the you know how fragile they were from the upbringing. Yeah. And I was just instantly judging, like, bro, what these? Yeah, bro, these guys are playing yeah. up, bro. Yeah. This guy and needs then a hiding. And it's always this one. This guy needs a hiding. Bro, how it is, bro? You can tell this guy's never got a hiding. <laughs> but that might be it. They've been getting hidings all their life. Yeah, that's and the exactly environments what it is. they come from. So, like you said, that's not their fault. It's they're a product of, of their environment and the, the things that have come up with. Um, and I think that. Once you understand that and and get over your own and so, like, because I'm projecting my anger and like how I feel they should be behaving. Yeah. I'm like, bro, this these kids need so much love yeah. and care and and affection and attention that you have to get over yourself first to be able to be in that space. Because it's not an easy place to you know. But um, I think with the work that I'm doing is it's it's little. It's like these little incremental shifts in in their, the way that they see. The, their environment and then the way they see themselves. Mm. So I help them create music, rap, right? Yeah, can we go into that for a little bit? What What is your like? What What? How do you help these young people? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, it's, it's kind of help, but I see it as just a, a creative outlet. So 
we got a program called Rap and Rec, which is rap and record. And it's it's just a space for them to to write about their lives and then, you know, start rapping. And I think just my own experience with music, I've been able to do that. And when I first got there, the staff were like, okay, guys, no swearing. No talking about your cases. We don't want to hear none of that. And I was kind of like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But I was like, in the environment that they're in, if that's all they can talk about and you're just shutting that that down, what are they going to talk about? Yeah. You know, because just because they're there at the moment and it's on the surface. So I had to fight for that, for, for them to be able to express themselves explicitly, yeah. even though they, no one wanted to hear it. But from that, it was like, after this, it's like, maybe we could write a, you know, who's out there on the outside that can, um that's always had your back, that's got love for you. Like, let's write, let them know how you're doing in here, you know? Just give a shout out to the fans and I'll be like, oh yeah, my uncle or, oh, my auntie or my nan took care of me. Oh yeah, I'll write to them. And then slowly you start building that rapport and that relationship, just like in life. Like, you gotta, you gotta build some trust. You can't just come and, yeah, straight into the deep end. You're like, you know, you gotta, you know, paddle on the surface a little bit before you, you get into the deeper side. There's plenty of people that come in and think that they're gonna like, save the world. They come in and and they're like, they're like, yeah, not nah, whatever I say, they'll listen to. Yeah, it's uh, like that's what I noticed with um our youth too. Like especially in those facilities, mm. is that, you know, they they clicked on man, and if you're not there to, um help them and and vice versa let them help you then it's like a nah, but yeah like yeah they they lock up it's a it's a it's a boundary that they're like nah mate i don't trust you because yeah. they haven't had a lot of people to trust in their mm. life yeah or they've trusted and have stabbed them in the back or something yeah. like that you know they've always let them down or something yeah. but their radar their bs oh. radar is really on like yeah. they can just tell with your fronting if you're faking it like if you're real they'll, they'll sense it but their radar is on and I think you just got to be as genuine as you can, you know, when you're in those spaces because these kids are sensitive. They've been through a lot and there's not a lot of trust. So you got to build that first. And I've been lucky enough to to have come with the experience I have been as a young and, and see that with them and just slowly build and let them express themselves, whether they're talking about ram raids, whether they're talking about high speeds, like that's their life. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? Like, let's talk about that and then dig a little bit deeper. And then, you know, and some of the boys, I've been with them for like five, six plus years. And then in the, in the free programs when, on the outs, once they've been released or they've come out, they're with us, they're still with us, they're still creating. And I think, um, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful to see the the progress. It's an, like, how important is it, not just for kids, but anybody to have an outlet where they can just be creative or just do something, you know? I think some of us don't understand how important it is. Um, and creative doesn't mean like rapping, singing, or mm. like drawing. Or Sometimes it's just going for a walk, like, mm nature like you see the beauty in nature and i think that um you know we we get so busy and so caught up in life and work and bills and relationships and and the roles that we hold but that's like as a dad or as a youth worker we're not just stuck in those in those categories there's there's so many things that we can do but i think we get caught up in the rat race that we forget that we just need time to be out there and go hug a tree bury like go hang out at the park go walk up the moonga like Go for a swim at the beach. That's creative, mm -hmm. like, and those are outlets that we 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 we. Some people minimize how important that is, and yeah. for us, I think the indigenous world, you know, we really view that as something that's crucial to our to our you know human progress. But in the in the in Western society, it's like make that money, man, like yeah. pay those bills, get in that rat race. Oh, hard. So it's it's hard for our young and still confused. They're like, oh, so what is it? What am I supposed to be doing? And it's hard because some of the parents and, you know, we've got to forgive the parents. Parents only know what they know until they know better. So, you know, they're trying to learn as, as they go as well. So, it's you know, it's uh, it's always a work in progress. But we've got to be open and receptive to like the learning and people making mistakes. What do you think about um, coming back to um, your, your mahi, like the institutionalization of our young people? Mm. And I know that's a deep, this, you can go as deep as you want. But that's what I noticed. I noticed that um, we'd have kids in. And kids will be there for nine months. Mm. You know, oh, sorry, nine weeks. Yeah, they'll come back two weeks later because they just didn't know. It's a structure. Yeah. But what's your take on that, brother? I think it comes back to identity. Mm. Trying to figure out who you are, especially at those those that age, like from thirteen to eighteen, and even more. But it's they don't. Some of these kids don't know who they are, whether it's like their family or their ethnicity or their culture or where they're from. Um, they're just kind of floating. And there's nothing to anchor them or to to ground them. Yeah. And so that's all they know. The system is all they know. Like they, they, no one has shown them 
better. Like there hasn't been a better br- blueprint or, or framework or a role model that's shown, bro, you could do this or you could try that or here's another way. And I think it. so when I was working at Youth Justice, um, Koroa Manaki, and I think this is off my head, I might be wrong, but it's like a 46 bed or 40 something bed uh, facility and probably like 38 to 40 of that is Māori. Yeah. And I'm just like, this goes back all the way back because some of those kids, their parents are across the road at the adult prison. Yeah. And they're talking about their granddad that's been inside too. And, you know, so I was like, bro, this is generational. Like this goes back to Te Tiriti, mm-hmm. like all the way back. The the disadvantage that has happened, you know, like their whole, the whole colonization period, the whole coming through and trying to, trying to wipe the, the culture away, the language, all of those things. We see ram raids and high speeds and violence and alcohol abuse and blah. But when you trace it back, bro, this goes right back. And people are like, nah, it's not. It's like, bro, it is. You can see that. You can see it's still happening. These are the the symptoms or the, the the effects of that. And it's generations later, but the kids are still forgetting. Like, how, how do those young'uns, how can they find their feet when their parents haven't or their grandparents haven't, you know? So they, they need so much, so much help. And I look at the the school system because the kids are like, man, we don't want to hear school. So even just some of the history about our people, it's not being shared in, in the classroom, mm-hmm. you know? Like all we hear about is like Columbus or like um, Napoleon. Like, uh, bro, who, can, who are these people? But we don't hear our history about um, Maui or like Shone, the, the navigator or like Hapi, you know? Like these are people that that's part of our lineage and like, I know that that would empower our youngins. So they're just, they're trying to find their way still, you know, they're out there floating and we, we need to find a way to anchor them. And to me, it's, as a Tongan, I'm like, I'm reaching out to the Tongan kids, like, where's your parents from? You know, like, this is your village. Oh, this is what happened to your village, the chief or the king. And and just showing like history and to empower. And I think it's just, yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of work, but I think just a little bit, uh, bit by bit. Because they say like, um, you know, if you cut somebody, you know, it's going to leave a scar, right? Mm. And that's what they kind of say is like, if you trace it all the way back in, our, in, in anybody's lineage, you go back, there's a scar mm. and it's conti- and it will continue on through the, through, through the generations and it opens back up when there's no healing. Mm. And I don't think if we go to um, Te Tiriti and, you know, like it goes back, like when I was at school, yeah. bro, we learned about the treaty. That's yeah. all we learned about. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's we just learned about that. You learn about that. Oh yeah. February's finished. Let's move on something else. Yeah. But you know, like I, I didn't get in trouble, but I got like, you know, like I got a lot of work because I was a teacher. Mm. I got a lot of raised eyebrows mm. when I'm teaching. No, this is actually what happened. Like yep. this is, this is the real, and here is the proof. Yep. And here, and you know, it's not like what I said, here's what academics said. And here's what this said. And you know, like when you're teaching older kids, like intermediate age, you know, it needs to be that, but it's, a, and this is where I think me and you kind of kind of this is where this is what I admire with you because I see like I kind of love I I try to exhibit the same action is that if I see a problem Mm. instead of being part of the problem I'll try and be part of the solution or figure a solution out and when you see these young people that need help especially in in the Tongan community Mm. instead of just going and those Tonga kids need to sort their shit out mm. and then, okay, on to the next, I've got to go to work. Yep. You're actively trying and putting your skill of and music and and just talking and and, and being able, able to understand in mm. action. And that for me is the reason why, I'm, and I, you know, I've told you this here, I put you above a, a lot of, I, I have a lot of um, high regard for you, bro. Yeah, so I appreciate that. it. But I think that, that that's the beauty of today, like the times that we have now with the access to the information. People like you who are pushing knowledge and like, especially with like cultural and indigenous knowledge and showing the other side. Because back in the days, it was just one way. It was it was a, it's not a dictatorship, but it was just like, it, now it's, a, it's there's more, it's an even playing field in terms of information. Mm. You can go out and do your own research. You can Google things. You can go and read about and find and have access to this information. But before we were just being drip fed the stuff and instructed and, you know, so now it's, I, I feel like with the young people, they have access to this information and people like us who are in the community are trying to show another light. Um, 
I think that's a it's a massive move, you know, uh, moving forward. But um, in terms of um, what you were just, I just want to go back to what you're saying about yeah. seeing a problem and trying to be part of the solution. I think that's been a long journey for me in terms of like um, assertiveness or the concept of the bystander effect. Yes. I, I, I stood there for many things growing up and just watched because I was waiting for someone else to jump in. And I just thought, who am I to, who am I to butt in or who am I to step in? But I think now it's just like, man, if you see something, do it. Like, you know, if you if you feel you can help, jump in there, you know. And I, I'm working on being more assertive with that and being more, I don't know, confident in myself to, that I have the ability or capacity to jump in and do something. E- even if it's just saying something, because I, I, I see the young people around me and I see my, my sons around me and they're looking at me and I'm role model. I'm, I'm going back to even like the young kids who have that framework or, or blueprint on how to be, how to carry yourself. And if I'm not confident in myself, I'm going to pass that on. But if I start working on it and be more assertive and say, hey, bro, you can't. This is my own personal experience. A couple of weeks ago, someone kept parking on my grass. They were working next door with tradies. The first time it happened, I was like, whose car is that? What are you up to? I don't know who that is. They're parking on my grass. And I was like, oh, oh, must be those guys um, fixing next door. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Next day, same thing happened. I was like, hmm. Maybe I should tell them to nah, don't don't be up, don't make a fuss. You know, you might be the scary islander trying to, you know, the angry, the angry tongue, and I don't want to be there. You know, I was doing the overcompensating thing again. And I was kind of like minimizing myself. And, and I was like, man, my son's watching me the way I carry myself. And he's like, whose car is that? Mm-hmm. And I think, man, if I had to keep letting this go, this guy's gonna come into my house and make a cup of tea, and I'm just gonna be like, oh, it's all good. Like, <laughs> I'm not just, you know, I don't wanna be an angry tongue. And I thought. <laughs> You know, if I'm gonna start being more assertive, I have to practice at one po- at some point. Like, yeah. better start now. And so the third day, I had parked on the grass to show don't park here. The man just came and parked right behind me and squeezed in, and I was like, okay. If I let it go to like day five, I might be just, Arr. yeah. I need to you know nip it at the bud now mm. while I'm still at level three and try I mean this is this is me in practice you know yeah, it's, it's a new thing so yeah. you're exhibiting behaviors that you know your son could see or yeah. and, and go okay dad has shown me yeah. what to do okay yeah. I'm excited for the climax for the story bro yeah, nah, please there's, there's nothing too exciting is I just because I jumped in the car and I was like let it go like bro just relax like it's just but then I thought man I'm tr- I need to be assertive I yeah. need to, I, I don't want to be a doormat and I want to learn how to to articulate my emotions because I'm a bit angry at this but if I left it it'll be it'll get a bit physical maybe because that's all I understand like yeah that's how we that's communicate a, yeah. anger is like bro I don't want to talk I just want to <laughs> and so when I, I just went around the corner I was, just, I was shaking I was like I started heating up and I was like bro is that you parked on the grass and he was just like uh he looked at the other van and he was like oh no nah, this is me here and I was like who gave you guys permission to park on the grass and he was just like no 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 oh um, no, no, we're over here. We're just here for the the house trying to trying to renovate. And I was like, bro, can you go ask whoever it is to park on the grass to move? And I saw the the other guy whose car it was popped his head out, and that made me more angry. I could feel my oh, bro, the audacity. And I just I was like, bro, I want to go shopping. When I come back, I hope you guys are gone. Boom. And I left, and I was like, <sighs> like I was sitting in the car, I was like. But my hands were like, you know, like, yeah. bro, I just want cause frustration, anger. But I'm glad that I hit it where it was because if I keep leaving it, which I've done most of my life, so yeah, I might stub my toe somewhere and whoever's around me is going to get the wrath. Yeah. But that's not the wrath from stubbing my toe. It's the wrath from someone parking on my car, yeah. stressed from work, and I haven't regulated myself, you know? So I'm just like, I'm, I'm working on that. So in terms of like but, seeing the issue and seeing uh, the problem, I'm, try- I'm still trying to practice that. Yeah, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But I, I think the main thing from what you talked about just then is those teachable moments for your kids to see. Mm. You know, mm. you, you, you've taught you, you, and people neglect those sometimes. Yep. They just go, someone's parked on my lawn. You know, like I got to talk it out. But they don't know those eyes that are watching. Yeah, Those kids, are the, your kids, you, you know, your, your sons and your, your sons and your daughters or your nephews and nieces. Yeah. And even like older people, your, your, yeah. your, your older brothers, older sisters. It's not yeah. a thing. But when they're looking and they see you react in a way that's conducive to everything. Yep. It's not just, oh, I'm just going to throw a rock. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it, it's powerful, man. I always remember like 
you know, and I'm not saying this to get any clout or anything, but you know, the bros that sit outside of the um the countdown yeah. and want something to eat and want or at the squeegees, whenever Brian and another pet peeve of mine, don't don't fuck a camera, don't, don't f- video everything. Don't video yeah. that shit. Come on yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. but I, my video cameras are my kids. Yeah. Because I want them oh, to see. 100. Yeah. I want them to see dad's a good dude, man. Like he just yeah. went in there and bought a whole chicken for this dude because mm. he's hungry. And I don't talk about it. I don't go, hey, kids, guess what? Look, did you see what dad did? Yeah. I'm just like, no. And I get to the car. All right, let's go home. And they, But they see it. Yeah. And then I hope, I pray one day when they're old enough, yeah. they'll be able to exhibit that behavior. Because, I mean, our kids are just mirrors of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's their role modeling right there, yeah. you know? Like, just seeing the people around you and, and, and even not just from elders, but uh, your peers. Like you, you look at the people that you carry around you or you, you keep around you. What, what, what characteristics do they hold? You know, what values and morals do they carry? Like that, you mirror that too, mm. you know? So if you're hanging around a bunch of thugs, he's going to have to be yeah, a thug, right. you know? Like, yeah. if you, you know, so I think like with our kids and, and the, the young people who are around us, the way that we carry ourselves is so important. And I think I, I try to keep that in mind because, you know, we're not perfect, mm. you know, and things will slip and slide. But I, I think it's um, owning the fact that it's it's always a work in progress. I'm gonna make mistakes, but I'm trying to trying to learn. This is a learning journey, you know. I'm still I'm still walking. So yeah. walking alongside them and never putting yourself above or below. It's just like, bro, we 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 all learning here. And yeah, it's so powerful though to understand that you're learning. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a lot of people that just think, I don't want to say they know it all, but have think that, oh, yeah, I'm at this point in my life. I don't need to mm. keep progressing. Yeah. yeah, I got that sus, bro. Yeah, don't no, worry, man. Don't, don't worry. Just about it. Someone on my grass, bro. Don't worry. I, yeah. I got this. But at the same time, being able to go, let's see, open your mind so much to just go, okay, I need to get better. Yeah. Like I've, I've, I don't think I clicked onto that, man, until like maybe like five years ago Yeah. when I was just like, yeah, no, nah, I know everything. I know everything. But now I'm like, you get bored when you don't. I, I get bored when I don't learn something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to get better at whatever I am. Yeah. And I think with you and your journey in uh, music, mm. it kind of was like that because I would I would hear your name everywhere. I would hear that you helped with this, you did this, but I never like, there was n- not a body of work mm-hmm. that was Rizzi's, right? It was not a Riz- Rizvan, oh, this is where you can catch him. Yeah. But Every time you'd get onto something, you'd know who you are and and it, and the esteem that people have for you, like your reputation. I think in the in the rap industry in in New Zealand, from what I stand, what I've heard, your reputation is the upholding dude that helps everybody, brings everybody up, and you know, like, and it's part of being the solution, not not. Pe- part of the problem because mm. you I mean Diggy's an inch uh, you know Diggy Dupay's a, uh, you know anything he does he's always shouting you out yeah. and it's 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 amazing brother uh, shout out to Diggy too um, yeah I think I've just been blessed to be put in these these situations and I think um, what we talk about being receptive and being open mm. I think um, just people I've come uh, cross paths with I think uh, I'm learning how to 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 read signs or see signs or, you know, recognize the tohus that are being presented. Like when I connect with someone, it's like, bro, just be yourself as genuine as you can. And I think that doors will open or opportunities will happen and blessings will come as long as you keep it real and, and, and be yourself. And so like meeting Diggy, like, yeah, that just, that was random. But yeah. I, we just built off that and I just kept it 100 with me. And I saw that he kept it 100 too. And I think we just built and developed. And similar to you, well, you, when you are helping others, you don't film that, you don't document yeah. it, and and show it for clout. You just you just do, yeah. you know. And I think that that's why people are like, man, I keep hearing, I always hear it too. Like, man, I've heard your name a lot, but I don't know who you are. Like, people keep mentioning like your name. I remember going to um, man somewhere. I was uh, it was a sneaker thing. Yeah, and they're like, um, because I knew of you, but I didn't know who. Like, I didn't. There was no face to who, yeah. who you were, right? And I, I remember it was at it was in town and. I was just like, oh, you're you're Rizzy. You're as fun. <laughs> Shit. Oh man. And then we then we linked up and we yeah. had a good chat. But because yeah. I, you know, I could sense energies. Yeah. You know, do you do that quite a lot with people that you work with? Yeah, yeah. Energies is massive. And um I think we all have got to trust our gut and our instinct. And, you know, we've been built a certain way, we've been through so many experiences, use that to gauge the energy around us. And mm. I think um the most important thing for me is like 
being able to recognize dangerous energy and or energy that you want don't want to be around because uh sometimes i mean life's too short man you want to be hanging around that and but at the same time you know my album is called everything happens for a reason that's what i've been standing by for the last few years that um in hindsight in retrospect you're gonna look back in the time you might not understand why why this happened why i missed that flight why i didn't hang with him why i broke up with her you might not get it in the time but when you look back you'll go oh okay and it's like everything happens for a reason you just gotta trust in the universe and god if you believe in god that everything's gonna be all good you might be going through some tunnels some of those tunnels might be long mm. but there's always a light at the end if you hang on you know and i think um for me it's just based around my own energy my own learnings the people i keep around me um and i feel like the energy you you you, you give out is the energy you'll get back if i was to walk down the street shh, yeah hoka wow <laughs> hey who is gonna come towards me some dudes who are on the same wavelength uh, who are on the same frequency of like oh yeah yeah what? yeah let's go but if i just be you if, if, if you want their happiness share the happiness like yeah. hey sh- what's up, dog? hey how are you boo you you're know? so right you're so right and about that. you'll get that same energy yeah. back but you see those boys that are at the uh, back against the wall in the club yeah. staunching everybody out the same energy is gonna come back to them because that's they're gonna attract the same thing yeah so i think yeah you're right like energy is, is massive and you just got to be aware and, you know, be open to, to different energies, but at the same time, protect your own. How did you realize that around energies? When, How old were you or when did that happen? Do you remember if there was a time where you were just like, actually, I think I'm, I think I might be the problem? No, no, I'm not saying that you were, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so as a youngin, uh, and it's funny because in life you go through different changes and you morph and you grow. Um, we had come from Tonga. Um and within a year, my cousin is murdered. And I'm just about to go into my last year of intermediate and moving into high school. My high school years, when 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 you talk to the people that knew me in high school, I was like the staunch as, you know, like be a tough dude in my school. But that's because I was coming out of my cousin being killed. Mm. And I was like, no one's going to touch my family again. No one's going to hurt my brothers. No one's going to hurt any of my, my my cousins anymore. And so I just put up this guard and I went through that for ages. And I, I didn't realize it until I was in my 30s where I looked back and I was like, why was I like that? Yeah. And I didn't get it. Why, why would I want Because after, once high school finished, that all broke and I became this joker. But it's, it's realizing like those traits that you carry. And, but, you know, if you had someone to, that guided you and let you know like oh that's why these are ha- these things are happening that's why your behaviors are like that or that's why you you hold these certain characteristics because of this because everything happens for a reason and everything has an effect or a side effect so you just gotta i don't know you just gotta be aware you know of did, how you walk and how you talk did that that realization help you when you started working with youth at youth justice because you were part of that you yes 100 percent. and when i said i was I was getting a bit of trouble in my teens. It was, it was right in the smack bang middle of high school. Mm. Like school just wasn't my thing. Like I, I, I shouldn't have even been there the last two years. I didn't do anything. But I started That's hanging all of us. with the wrong That yeah. was me too, bro. <laughs> I just went there to have some lunch and play basketball. Bro, That's what I was there for. Yeah, I was just there to have my lunch and have other people's lunch too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, nah, shout out to my boys. <laughs> They supported me through that. Did you go to Northcote? Nah, I went to Glenfield. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a small school over there. Shout out to GC. Um, I was lying, say I went to Westlake because Westlake's the only school that everybody knows on yeah. that side. But um, <laughs> yeah, I think it was just, um, it's you know, it's always everything's learning, eh? Everything's learning. And when I look back at who I was back then, I think that you could, you could look at your past and be ashamed or be embarrassed or be like, oh my God, and cringe. But take those those lessons, take those learnings and work with it, you know, like try to help develop something better. Cause that's, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do, you know, that's, and that's what I, I tell the youngins that I'm working with now. Like, very, I went down a similar path to you, but it's all good. You got heaps of time, you know, we're still a work in progress. We're still, you're still on your journey. Just keep, keep working at it. Like you, there's better things ahead of you, if you choose to. But just like on your album, you know, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Cause I think that time in your life, do you think if that didn't happen, you would be a youth worker? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, yeah. And I was just, 
I think I had the mentors during that time, once I finished high school, that showed me like, bro, shh, why do you think you're tough? Yeah. It's cousins, it's love. But they're like, bro, why are you, you know? And, and then they started role modeling. You can be a man and still show uh, affection or show emotion. So I was I was blessed to have those those older cousins who I used to see as these tough like gang dudes or you know they were just men. They were mm. to me that was like oh that's what a man looks like. But they were showing me like hugging and you know talking, um, having deep and meaningful conversations with the other bros and having this um, deeper fellowship with with the other the other men around me like the other boys who are older. And I was I was so blessed to have that. And I I try to um, I try to uh, you know, do the same behaviors or or show the same character characteristics with the boys around me or or the other men around me, and even just you know, conversation with wahine in high school because I was there staunch. I was very girls used to be like, "Are you not interested?" And in, and in I saw like, you know, why are you too cool? To, you know, but for me it was like I didn't know how to talk to girls mm-hmm. at that time. I was still trying to learn, but the role modeling and the blueprint that was set for me was from these cousins, and that's what I. That's part of the the person that I am today, and, and that's what I try to to show the youngins, you know. Without without that role modeling with your older cousins and stuff, do you feel that you like the path you would have gone down would have been so different right now? Oh, definitely, hundred percent. I I I owe them a lot, and I tell them, I tell them a lot um a lot of times. Just man, if it wasn't for you guys, um, I don't think I'd be the person I am today, a- including the the learnings and the. The teachings of my parents. Mm. Um, my parents are awesome, but you know they only knew what they knew. And there's some things that they can they can uh, cover a lot of bases. There, but there'll be things you'll be you'll be slipping through some of the holes and trying to find things for yourself, and you won't find it at home. You might find it somewhere else. So yeah, to them, and even just the the religious background that I was brought up. And so I, I, I was born into a, a religion called the Baha'i faith. Oh, wow. That's where my name comes from. Yeah, so Rizwan yeah. is a Baha'i name. Oh, wow. People think it's like a tag or like a hit or a rap name, but no, that's, that's my real, that's my name. Um, so I was born into this, into the religion of the Baha'i faith. And some of the principles is like unity and diversity, uh, equality of men and women. Um, the world is but one country and mankind is citizens. Like it's a real inclusive faith. And so I was raised in a lot of, yeah, with a lot of those principles, but also just being able to be exposed and interact with other ethnicities because it's not a, it's not a Tongan church. It's not a yeah. you know, Balangi thing. It's like we had Filipinos, we had heaps of Persians. Because, I mean, like um, with the Baha'i faith, and can you educate me on this, please? It's huge in, in the islands, eh? Mm. Like it's, it's quite massive. So in Samoa, it's it's got a big um, yeah, they following. Got a, they got a temple over in Samoa. I don't think. I mean, numbers wise, it's not that big, but I think it's just. Um, I think the coverage, like, who would think there's some, um, you know, like there'd be anything other than Christianity in the islands? Mm. But I was born into it. Like I'm old, and like people are like, "Man, how did the Baha'i faith in Tonga? Like, what? What is that? You know?" So it's, it's quite. Po- uh, I don't want to say popular, but it is. Yeah. A, it's a huge thing in the islands. Yeah, it's 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 been a thing, and I think. Um, some people gravitate towards it because of the inclusivity coming from a lot of the Christian denominations in Tonga. There's a blur between culture and mm. and religion and the churches, and I think some people get a bit, you know, oh man, that's way too much. That's not, I don't, that's not how I understand the Bible, or you know, there's a lot of drama and complications. So some people come to the faith, to the Baha'i faith, and they're like, oh, similar mm. but different, and that yeah. works for me and my family. So, so they come come to that and I think yeah it's 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 an interesting faith and um yeah what have you learned like uh, and I cuz you know with the in the bible that was like about um you know like community cuz it is a very community based um faith right yeah and it's all about and it kind of like cuz I didn't know I didn't know that mm. you were Baha'i. Yeah. and but now it's starting to all make sense for it's me. how it packs uh, yeah, yeah, I can kind of get, no, not just that, but just the way you're, because I had a question around patience, right, coming up in my head. Because I, in my head, I'm like, you know, you, you know, with, with, with your music, mm. you know, you're very, I, and I'll say this because I, you know, from things, you're very patient, like, because there's a lot of things that you were contributing to that was, you know, doing well. Mm. But now it all makes sense because in the Baha'i faith, and I, I don't know a lot about it, but I do know that it is about doing what's best for the community and for the people next to you, right? Mm. Which is exactly what you exhibit, have been exhibiting for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's probably one of the definitions of patience is just 
helping others and putting others first mm. um, in a way. Um, but it's just, I feel like it's just happened the way that, it, uh, you know, God's plan. Like it's just happened the way that it's unfolded the way it's supposed to unfold. But I'm just being blessed to connect with these, with certain people. And I've been waiting to have my turn. And I feel like um, I've, I've needed the time to work on myself first. Mm. And blessed to, to be connected with these other people and, and their journeys. But I need also needed that time to to work on me because I've been through a lot in the last year. That the last year has been like the hardest and the best year of my life, and I've had so much growth. Um, and those close to me would know, like they'll see the changes and the improvements and the learnings. But the patience comes with for me. It's just I I just I trust in God and I trust trust in the universe that things will happen the way they do. And even though I, I sometimes say that life is short, at the same time, it's like being intentional with the time that you do have here. And for me, I've been able to, you know, help others on their journey. And, and just, for me, it's just jamming with them, bro. Like spending the time. That's it. I'm I'm not doing any actual help. Like, bro, this is a, you know, I don't have a ladder to help them step up anywhere. It's just, I've just been there mm. with them, doing what they're doing. There's no, like strategies or anything that Rizzy brings to I've just been there in the room with them or in the garage or in the studio just hanging out jamming having these conversations that's it that's all I've been doing I, I don't want people to think that I've been like marketing yeah. plan or strategies to help uh, people never but it's get just that. like <laughs> like I yeah I don't think anybody would th think that with you but yeah you're so right they say like there's this new kind of quote I spoke a uh, thing that I've been going through in my head is that like um the best ability to have is availability mm. and being available for people that you love. And that's what I've really been, I think once I unlock that, I can't, I can't, I can't that's not my bar, by the way. I, mm. I, I don't know where I got that from, but you know what I mean? If I'm available for people that I love the yeah. most and I'm ready to, you know, give as much as I can, then, you know, God or the universe or whatever will pay me back when it's ready. Whoa. And I think that's what you're talking about. hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's where I've been at. And yeah. I think, um, that's one of that's 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 a part of it. The other part is I've been doing a lot of self care and like work on myself in terms of how I see myself, mm. which is massive. Um, and which is another reason why I was like thinking about coming to connect with you here because I actually hit you up like last year I think to do a um, a bakery run, uh, and I was like, you know, like obviously I know a bit about pies, hey, hey. but for me it was that's how I saw myself because like. It was, I don't know, just perspective and the way that I um, I viewed myself was different to, to how I view myself today. Wow. And I think um, a lot of that had to do with me looking at my past, letting my past dictate where I'm headed or who I am, looking at my past, who I was to, to who I am, but then who I want to be, like looking into the future. And I want to be confident, you yeah. know, like I want to love myself. I want to be able to look in the mirror and be like, yo, not just physically, but even just mentally and, you know, like have integrity, have these qualities that I feel like I I admire and other people. I want to hold that. Mm. I want to carry that. So I had, I've had a, a tough year, but I've, I've, in that year I've sat down and written some goals out, financial goals, physical goals, you know, like career, but I put a character goals and character goals. Wow. Part what? of it was just, I want to, I want to be a man of my word. Um, I want to have integrity, like, bro, catch up soon. Yeah. Catch up, bro, we'll link soon. Yeah. Bro, that's the biggest build up. I know. You shouldn't even say that anymore because people just, that's, that's an automatic cancel. Like, so I think I've done that. Like, not that. I, I think I I had to change my mindset yeah. around that last year because, like I was saying, the availability of things, right? And now I say to people, if you need me, I say, this is not an empty promise. Yeah. If you need me, you just tell me. Reach out. Yeah. And I only say it to certain people. Yeah. But it's one of those things like, you know, because it's fucking, it's so empty when you go, bro, if you need help, let me know. Yeah. It's like, no, they won't. Yeah. So, yeah. bro, I'm continually, and you you could, I always hit you up every month or two. Hey, bro, checking in. How are you, my bro? Yeah. And and it's that that conversation without expectation coming back. It's not like, hello, bro, how's it going? Gee, what are you up to on Saturday? Can you help me move house? Like, yeah. no, 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 that's that, that's a different conversation. Mm. It's just keeping lines um, open. Yeah. And there's no like financial or or wanting to get a kickback somewhere. Expectations. No, there's none. It's just like, 
I, I, and bro, the same thing. I, I love hanging with you, and I love the energy that me and you have. Mm. So I'm I'm keeping those lines as open as I can. And anything I had, yeah. I was like, yeah, bro, like let's let's link up here, let's do this. And yeah. and a lot of people, and I think a lot of people, just in general, just in life, if you reach out to someone, they automatically think, what does this guy want? Yeah. What does he want from me? Yeah. yeah when's this kicking going to happen? Yeah. But when you don't do it, they get a bit shocked, like, yeah. oh, and then the pr- paranoia hits, oh, surely you want something. Nah, man, I just want to make sure my bro that I have a lot of time for and a lot of energy for, just want to make sure they're okay. 100%. You know? I, I, yeah, there's um, empty promises. I think part of that is, is, is a cultural thing, the learned behavior that we're just so used to offering things. You're right. But when you recognize that, I need to, to um, dial it back, I need to step back and relax and just have time for me, you got to learn to put out those boundaries, which is what I'm learning how to do now, which mm. is like, oh, sorry, bro, I can't, I can't do it this weekend. Like maybe next week or another time, but not, you know, that's hard, man, yeah. to say no to to others. And I think that's what I've learned this year is being able to, when I talk about assertiveness, part of that is that, yeah. being assertive for myself. Like, bro, I need to, I need to relax this weekend. Like I've had a tough week at Mahi, you know, I need to chill. Because I, like, ultimately that helps you to be able to regulate those emotions, you know? When you do stub your toe, you can like regulate, breathe then mm. instead of holding on to it, bottling it all up and then eventually lashing out. But I've been able to do that this year, focus on myself, not in a selfish way, but just giving my myself the love and attention that I needed that I've been trying to give to others. Because I think you become a, a better version of yourself for, for those around you. And for me, like my, my, my boys, um, and just the team that I keep, and I think um, that's been able to give me so much more clarity um, moving forward. And still learning, still you know, still trying to walk, but I'm getting there. You know, Rizzy, you, you seem to me, and you know, like I know you, I know you a lot, but not so much. But you seem to me like you, you know, like in terms of circles, like friends of circles, mm. like you're a welcoming dude, bro. Like whoever wants this help, you're like cool. Is it important to like boundaries to? keep those tight with the with the with the circle of people that you have around you or is there certain tears or is there these people I will do so much because you just seem such like a giving guy and I, you know like I, I'm a giving guy too but I've had to learn like mm. sometimes you got to hone it back a bit you know not you but I'm saying for yeah. me yeah yeah I think I'm getting there mm. I think I'm getting there and I'm just being um just careful of the energy that I do put out because I just recently or a, a few months ago I realized that I've I kind of overstepped the boundaries of um, help and it beca- they became dependent on the help. Mm. And then they, they started asking for more like money that I didn't have. And I was just like, oh, bro, I could I could come scoop you up and do this. But, you know, but I started compensating my own, you know, yeah. compromising my own plans and my own um, goals um, to do that. And I think that's what set me off on the goal thing. And part of their goal, the character goal is, you know, man of my word, but also, um protecting my my energy yeah. and myself for for me but also for my kids you know so that anything outside in the community and the mahi and and just music i don't bring that back home because i didn't regulate because i've been over spreading myself thin out there and then when it comes to going home it's like shh bro i'm tired you know like bro this is the this is where you should be spending the most energy yeah. you know this the most time investing in and the, the your loved ones and it's it's hard because you think, oh man, I don't want to be stingy or like be that snobby dude out there. But I think at the same time, like you'll learn and, yeah. and, and the universe and God will let you know. Because <laughs> yeah. when you've done too much time out there and things aren't going right at home, very refocus, yeah. be able to recognize that. And, you know, I think I'm at a crossroads like that at the mm. moment with my personal stuff, you mm. know, like, yeah, reset. Reset's always important, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I want to give you a tip. All right? I'm going to give you a strategy that I've had to use, okay? Yeah. And I'm probably outing myself. I'm probably um, dry snitching on myself for doing <laughs> this, okay? Because, you know, like I get asked to do quite a lot of things. Yeah. And a lot of them are for free. And I'll do mm. it because it's like cool. Yeah. But I caught myself slipping a lot because I was like, yeah, 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 sweet, sweet, sweet. I've got to get myself out there, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So what I, this is what I would do now. And bro, anybody listening to this, you could probably do this as well. When somebody asks you to do something, ask them to get back to you in a month, okay, mm. on the day. So you say, like, I'll I, I be asked, hey, bro, could you come and do my podcast? And I'll, if I'm not busy, I'll be like, yeah, you're very sweet as. But I say, bro, can you, like, get back to me on, like, February the 4th, the 4th or the 5th? 
then I'll wait to them. And if they get back to me on the date, then I'll do it. Because mm. that's telling them, that's telling me that they care enough to go, oh, okay, he, okay, I'll better text them then. Yeah. I'll, I'll let them they know. made the effort. But if they didn't and they forget about it, then I'm like, oh, well, I mustn't have been that high up on yeah. the priority list. Yeah. And yeah, I've been doing that just, just with ones cool. that I'm a bit like, you know, I can't go too all the time. But if I know you I'll, yeah. and, I, and I believe in you and you need some help, of course, I'll be like, yeah, sweet. But yeah. it's these ones that I don't really know that well. And, you know, it could be anything. Could be, yeah. hey, bro, could you, you know, like, hey, could you come to my school? And I'll be like, yeah, of course. School's a bit different. But yeah, yeah it's just, that's what I, that's something that I did. That's cool. That's a cool method to help protect yourself. Cause, uh, yeah, because these people, if they actually wanted you and they were like, yo, like, is it possible, please? Yeah. And they say, hey, can you, or it doesn't have to be a month, it could be next week. Hey, yeah. can you hit me up next week, Thursday, and I'll yeah. see how I'm going. Yeah. And uh, and if they do it, then it's like, sweet. And if they don't, then it's like, okay, I kind of, all right then, yeah. let that's, you know. Bro, that's funny because I just posted up a story yesterday on Instagram because um, – Someone that I haven't seen in like two, three years or have heard from, they I saw that. they just hit me up. But you know, it wasn't even the um, it wasn't even the favor they were asking. It was more the fact that he asked. Oh, I'm exposing the oh wow, well, right, hey, yeah. let's throw it out there. Don't, hey, they, don't, don't cut this out, all right? Keep this in. I need this to be they, a. Uh, so. They asked. They straight away the first thing was like, "Bro, you reckon you can share my last post, my latest post?" And then it was a couple of other things like, "Bro, I see you on Dickies." Story, bro, cracked it. And then it was like a few lines down, and it was like, man, long time, man. How you been? And I was just like, bro. Uh, like, that just, I usually don't mind. Like, I, I didn't share that sort of stuff or screenshot, but I was just, it just, um, yeah, I was, I was, I was pissed off. Bro, you're talking to the man about this one. I know hey. exactly what you're talking about. Here's one, here's, here's my story about that one. I know it's your podcast, but I'm just <laughs> over here giving my stories. <laughs> okay. Bro, I, had, I had my, a school bully. Yeah. And he was he was he was the biggest bully Damn. and he bullied everyone, right? He hits me out. It's the most broken English. He's a multi follower. He's he was all good, but it was all like you know you for you and capital yeah. D with an <laughs> at symbol. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was um, old school Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was almost like he's on Tex two thousand on Tex weekend. <laughs> and I was like, how did he do this? It's a Friday night. <laughs> he goes, um, and I had to. It took me a while. I, I, and it was like, gee, get me on bakery run. Me and he goes, and he goes like this. He goes, me, you, and Kanoa. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> not the request. <laughs> and he's like, and we go to, and we'll go to Clendon. And then in my head, I was like, what the hell is this, man? It took uh, me like ages to f like read it first and foremost. And then I was very lucky. I got to go on the project, and I pulled it up for Kanoa. And I was like, Kanoa, man, I've got this um request from my bully. <laughs> if um you can have a look at this, and she was trying <laughs> to read it. Episode. She was like. I don't have a clue what this house says. I can see my name's got an at, got two ats in it. <laughs> got oh, a the hat for the ats. <laughs> and I was just like, oh man. And she's like, does he not know how to use uh, commas? And I was like, I don't know, but you know, if you're keen, we can do it. Eh? Like, not yeah. with him though, but yeah, you know, like it's, um, but yeah, yeah, people sometimes, you know, hey, when they see somebody kind of rising, they're yeah. like, hey, yo, and that's all right. But at the same time, show some. Do some, Do some form, man. But it's, at the same time, it's the same as you. It's like the rapport. Like when you're building rapport with your kids at, at, yeah. or with young people, it's the same thing with adults. Yeah. You can't just go in and say, like, hey, bro, can you share my things? Yeah. Okay, but if bro. he asked how I was, if that fourth line was first, like if he asked how I was doing, I would have considered it. I was like, oh, bro, I'm good. And then, oh, bro, can you share? Oh, yeah, man, all good. But he went straight to the, bro, can you share my latest post? Cause like, I was like, bro, the audacity of this, man. Is this the same when people ask you for beats, bro, to be honest? Bro. Yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't charge for music. Like, I, I just, that's the thing. Like, I just I just vibe. If I can vibe and jam with whatever it is, I, like the project I'm working on, a beat or like a feature for someone, if I can, if I'm into it and I'm vibing with it, I'll do something on it. But if I can't, I'll just, bro, sorry, man, I couldn't come up with anything. Mm. Or, you know, my creativity is a bit off this week. But um, yeah, but the favors, it's, yeah, it's starting to, it's starting to hit me. So I had to, I had to, um, Cut that one off and practice my assertiveness straight away. There you go. And be like, bro, can't do it. Sorry, brother, man. I just, I'm, I'm a bit busy. I got um, with all the the things that are going on around the world and my mahi wrapping up. I got to focus my my stories on this and my own music. And uh, yeah, I just got the scene, and I was just like, oh yeah, uh, unblock. <laughs> I mean, block. <laughs> just do you feel do, like like saying that? Eh? Like I feel a bit. Sometimes I feel stink having to give excuses for not wanting to do stuff. You know, I, I, if it's family, I get it. Like, but if it's just random people and I'm like, 
you're kind of out of line for asking him this, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll justify why I can't do it first. Yeah. But in actuality, I'm just like, damn, bro, like you, you come out of nowhere with this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I look at a, a lot of people around me and I think as part of it is their up, your upbringing. And mm. I think like just having that, um, I don't know, the aroha for others and you're always trying to serve and give. But I've seen, and a lot of bosses that I've met through life, they're cutthroat. They just don't have that. And they're just like, no, no, no. And that's pros and cons for both. Yeah. But I see the advantage of just being straight and going, nah, bro. Especially when the product is at, at, at stake. Yeah. Like the product, if if you having to say no will make the product better yeah. or you having to say, hey, sorry, we can't get you, we're not going to get you on. Yeah. If it's the product, then I totally understand. Yeah. If it's like an album and you're like, hey, like we're only going to get you on for this or hey, we we, we might not have you on a f- for a feature, yeah. whatever. If the pro- if that's what your vision for the product is, yeah. then I totally understand that. Yeah. I, I think I'm more around that. Yeah. And he can't, you know, like, and and there's no two, there's no wrong way. Yeah. But it's um when you're so focused on a product, and that, that's what it brings me to my next point about your album, right? Mm. How long did this album take from start to finish, with the product being the end? Um, I think it's been over a year where I've just been chopping away at it and and experimenting with different beats and different concepts for songs. But um, I think it's been a work in progress in the last five years. Just the whole idea of um putting a proper album out. Everything that I've done to this point has been like short little projects, mm. just little EPs and features of other people. But I, I think I'm at a point where I'm, I feel confident enough to release a full album and the whole idea of everything happens for a reason. Most of the songs, they're all real reflective. Like I'm, I don't think there's any bangers like for radio, but it's it's more like a journal that people can sit down and listen to and, and help them to reflect and internalize some of the things that's going on. And hopefully they can resonate with some of the topics and the subjects. But I, for me, it's, you know, it's just been life, you know, the experiences, the ups and downs, um, being able to recognize the signs, being able to articulate where I'm at in life um, and being able to to share your experiences or, or the learnings of, of those in a language or in a way that people can understand. Mm. Um, I think some of the, the subject matter is pretty heavy, but the way that I rap it, the youngins inside, they'll be able to understand what I'm talking oh, about, wow. you know? So that's what I'm trying to um, to work towards. But also it's just a, a timestamp of where I'm at in life. Um, yeah, been a, a lot of changes in my life and I think um, just a lot of gratitude and gratefulness to to be where I'm at, to be able to still stand and, and be a father and, and, and be a musician and and. and and be a youth worker. Yeah. That um, there's that um, uh, Rick Rubin says there's a quote that went around, and it's like, um, if you're doing it for audience of yourself, you should be the most like the audience of one, which is you, mm. you know. And don't worry about what the audience thinks. Yeah. Just as long as you're happy with it, and you're, you know, it's from your brain, it's from your creative soul. Yeah. You know. Uh, have you noticed that's a that's that's a thing that's happened a lot more now than than people that are trying to make and make a project to get radio play or to get on? Yeah, I think it's a big big shift now because also with, without you know major labels and everyone's so independent and doing their own mm. thing, they have creative control of everything. But with the creative control, there's no people around you saying how it should be. Yeah, you know, you get to do, you get to market it, you get to to say whatever you want on your track because you're releasing it. No one has a say in, in what you're creating. But at the same time, I think it's like, it's a big, it's, it's massive. It could be overwhelming when you're like, oh, what does this look like to anybody else? Mm-hmm. But like Rick Rubin says, the journey is to get to the point where you're like, it doesn't matter what anybody else says, you know? This is my truth. Whether you understand it, whether it resonates, this is my truth. And to be able to share something so honest and so real with the world, that's that's the biggest thing. Because yeah. It comes back to you at the end of the day, like you know, your name's on it. Yeah, your you know name's it on it. Like your integrity is there. Yeah, you know, I could I could be out here rapping about the streets if I wanted to, but it won't be me. I'm I'm not in the streets, yeah. you know. Like that's not my life. So I have to I have to be real. I'm a dad. I'm a youth worker. I'm I'm, I'm doing. I have these past experiences, but it doesn't define me. Like I'm using it to to improve my life and move forward into a better light, you mm. know. And that's where I'm I'm hoping this 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 project kind of reflects that and I had heaps of quotes in my head that kept popping up but I was too scared to share because I might do one of those you know blood is thicker than another man's treasure like this oh, wow. pause. <laughs> pause pause that super one. pause on that pause that one sheesh so I, was, hey, I had these quotes that are the only quote that I do remember that I've that been keeping it comes back to assertiveness and I think it comes back to 
you know, how you view yourself and even just having respect for yourself, which is um, the quote is, be careful what you tolerate because you're teaching others how to treat you. Whew. And I don't even know where that's from. And I don't, I don't even want to bot it. Right, just take it, just take it to say you made it. Back. <laughs> no, no. So that's from the book of Rizzi. Right <laughs> the, the book of uh, North City Rizzi right there, baby. Yeah. Uh, no. But yeah, I, I, I get that sense like with, with you and, and like I interviewed uh, the movement, mm. which the bro is from the streets, Yeah, you know, but he said like, this is, I don't give a shit what everybody else thinks. Yeah. Here's my album. Here's my body of work. Yeah. If you uh, if you get down with it, you get down with it. Yeah. If you don't, kitty pie. Yeah, no skin off my nose. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so that's, that's a, why, Yeah, that's a cool example to bring too because I met him early, you know, like years ago, and what he used to talk about in the raps was real, <laughs> and what he's talking about now is still real, but it's a different it's a different shade, you know, to where he's at in his journey and um, the progress that he's made and the learnings that he's had, bro. Bro, proud proud of the bro and what he's done. And that's that's a role model and that's a blueprint for others who are coming through the streets that you can see that there's there's a chance for you to change. I mean, you know, there's opportunities there and you can you can do it. He, yeah. If he can do it, you can do it. And he's just doing so much for the youth in yep. Australia and New Zealand. It's it's so cool. But um yeah. bro, I'm I'm you know, I'm a big fan and uh, I I can't wait to get a full body of work from Rizzy. And uh yeah, so I'm looking forward to it, bro. Sure, brother. Yeah, and uh, we, we, you know me, bro. I'll, I'll, I'll be dissecting those lyrics and be like, "Hey, brother, what do you mean when you said this?" I think I annoy a lot of the rappers. I think I annoy Spike more than anybody because, yeah. like, "Hey, brother, what do you mean when you what said is, yeah. uh, like the Ice oh, Man, brother, with yeah. Michael Jones?" Has anybody yeah. else done that with Tyson and Ice Man, bro? And he's like, <laughs> "He's like, yeah," but you know, hey, yeah, he, the nerds know. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's why I wanted to come and chat to you. You can only say, say so much in a rap. You know, mm. um, and it's just good to have that cord at all. Because uh, is it free? Is it fr sorry to interrupt you? Is it free to just be like, I don't have to rhyme anymore. I just speak. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a, you know, I've, I've learned to talk. I've learned to try to articulate my thoughts. Um, I mumble a lot, but I, I think when I didn't when hear you mumble, to, <laughs> when it comes to the to the raps, um, it's limited because you have a certain amount of bars, certain amount of like the BPM, you know, beats per minute. You got to fit it in between, but. When it comes to just caught it on, just letting it flow, you get to really dig into to the person, yeah. you know. So um, through management, well, it's, yeah, and that's the other thing. This is the first, my first ever year of having management. Through them, they've been saying like, oh, yeah, when the album drops, we're going to have some concerts and here, here. And I told them that I just want to sit on a desk in front on the stage with my laptop, play the music and just talk like this. With, you know, through each song, and go. Oh, this is what happens. This is what I means. You know, because I feel like as a as I a would, fan, I would I love to hear it. I would like, love to contribute somehow. Bro, so, I, I would love to, to me, bro. Bro, so, hey, you know that's what that's <laughs> that the bro stuff. But if you need me to, um, like moderate it and facilitate Yo. stuff, please. Do not hesitate. And it's not one of those empty ones again. <laughs> it's not one of those, oh, hit me back on March the 3rd. No, I would I would drop whatever I'm doing because yeah. I I believe in in what you do and I believe not just on, on in rap, but just in life. And yeah, if there's if you ever need me, yeah, I'm, I'm available. For sure, you, brother. Yeah, that Appreciate would be amazing. It. Appreciate it. Let your yeah. management know, eh? Yeah. Uh, just no, to I'll start listening to, to you. Don't worry about all that stuff. Yeah. Listen to me. Just give me a laptop. <laughs> Yeah. I'll be your DJ, bro. I just got to try to finish this album. I still got a few few verses I got to record <laughs> oh. and flying out to Tonga in, in a couple of weeks to shoot the video, um, which is going to be exciting as well. So, yeah. King. Well, you know, like you talked about, you know, digging and stuff like that, but I'm, I'm just so thankful and I'm so like just in awe that you let us dig and, and, and get in and understand who you are, bro, as a person for for the last hour. So thank you so much, my bro. Oh, thank you. And also thank you for what you do for the young people and thank you for, for the energy. And I, I, I don't know if people have done this, but, you know, and I, when I'm doing these types of things where I have to wrap up and shit like that, I think about like, if I was in your shoes, what would be something that would be really heartfelt for me that somebody said? Mm. And I just want to say thank you for your sacrifice. I, it's not even your sacrifice, the sacrifices that your family have made for you to put energy, that energy into other people and now youth. Okay, brother. So thank you so much, my bro. Boo, thank you. It's been right, that. Boss, right there. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> All right, but we'll be back on Wednesday. Um, we'll be back for uh, Goat Busters, bro. I'm going to bring you back in here for Goat Busters, brother. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, my Cheer, bro. My bro. Thank you. Thank you.